I, uh, I will start today a series of videos concerning uh, this vintage air data computer. This one is from Bendix. You can see on the front the inlets for pitot-static input pressures. You can see here in the middle an altitude reporting. This is used for the transponder. The altitude is coded in 10 bits. Resolution is 100 feet. The coding is called Guillaume code. It is a modified gray code. And uh, we have here a selector for different tests. There is a variation of altitude, calibrated airspeed, Mach number, Mach through, AR, I don't know, the true airspeed through, calibrated airspeed through, digitizer, and the lamp check. And there are two push buttons, push to test, and a self-test button. So we can see the reference of this unit. The goal will be to get it work and to connect this unit to real instruments. We can see that there are four modules. On the right here we have the computed airspeed module. This one I don't know, the sticker is missing. Here we have the MAC number module. And the last one, which is a bigger one also, this is the pressure altitude module. We can see that the airspeed module has two input pressures, the pitot pressure and the static pressure on the other side here. And the altitude module has of course only one pressure, which is the static pressure. This is of course an electromechanical air data computer. I don't know the manufacturing date, but it is in the 70s. Okay, so let's start by removing the altitude module, for example. Okay, look at that. Okay, we can see a different shawl here, a lot of gears. We can see the anti-backlash things using the springs here. There are several synchro transmitters. Okay, so we can see that this thing is probably the altitude encoder. There are a lot of wires connected to that device. And we can see an adjustment here. There is a fine adjustment every one or two thousand feet. So we can see here a cam. The cam is required because the relation between the pressure and the altitude is not linear. This thing permits to have a fine correction. Okay, so we can make a zoom on the cam here. Okay, you can see the correction cam here. We can see the lever. You can see that there is a small PCB with uh, no pump, uh, probably an equivalent of uh, LM709. Uh, this is a single pump, and there is a transformer. This is something classic in the designs of the 70s. Uh, this is probably an amplifier uh, for the vertical speed. I have seen in the Collins 590, which is also a central air data computer, an amplifier. The vertical speed uses actually the generator which is linked to the servo motor. So I cannot see the motor on that device, it is maybe on the other side. And we can see here two clutched synchros. So this is something common also. So this permits to have a measurement of a variation of altitude around a given altitude. Generally the range is plus or minus 200 feet. So there should be connected to one connector. And we have also several synchros on that thing. Okay, so this is the encoder here. The red and white and the black and white are always the, the reference winding of the synchro. Okay. Okay, so we can see we have two sub D connectors. We can see that there is a transformer here. So this is a complete altitude computer. We can see this very nice thing. We 
Okay, so the sensor is actually this assembly here. We should find inside the capsule and the zero detector. And normally we have a servo control, but I don't see the motor. The motor is maybe that thing here. It is very big. Because I cannot see any motor on that thing. Okay, the motor should have a, a small pinion, it is not the case. Uh, this is a synchro something. This is a resolver. It's a synchro resolver, it is not common. So let's see what do we have inside uh, these covers. Let's start with the big one, the most interesting. Okay, we should find a no ring. Okay, so we have actually two capsules. Okay, you can see that the capsules are compressed because they are partially evacuated. So the outside pressure is higher than the inside pressure, so they are compressed. And when the altitude increases, there will be an expansion of both capsules, and the expansions are translated into a rotation of that disk. This thing should be a zero detector. Generally, there is an LVDT sensor, a differential one, but this one is circular. It is not common, but we can see there are two wires here. And we should have also the wires. Yes, there is a cable here. So we should find an excitation coil. And normally two pickup coils because we need the differential measurement. So we have on the bottom side of this detector actually a shaft which is linked to the servo motor which permits to retrieve the zero position. Okay, so the output of the sensor here is connected to a servo amplifier. So this permits an accurate measurement of the rotation of that disk here. Okay, and we should find also a temperature compensation. This is maybe this bar, this bar here. Because the elasticity of the capsules it depends uh, on the temperature. So there is a normally a temperature compensation. It is uh, generally a bimetallic stuff, but I don't know exactly on that system. And there is a capacitor. So I don't know exactly the goal of this capacitor. This is maybe uh, to have a tuning with the inductance of the sensor. I don't know. Okay, so let's see the other cover, the small one. Okay. Bingo, so this is the servo motor. Look at the size of that thing. It is the first time I see such a servo motor. Okay, you can see this is effectively the motor generator. It is a, a tachometer. The tachometer is required for the vertical speed. The motor is from Bendix. Next module is the MacNabber module. Okay. okay, so there is a servo control, obviously, so this is the motor for the servo control. Maybe it can be better to remove the complete stuff, so I think it should be possible to remove this complete assembly, yes. There is also two sub-D connectors, it is beautiful. So we have here a triple potentiometer. The Mach number is used for different things. It is used for the true airspeed and it is used also for the temperature. Normally we should find across one potentiometer the square root of the total air temperature and on the whipper one potentiometer we have the true airspeed. Okay, because the Mach number is the ratio between the true airspeed and the velocity of sound, but the velocity of sound is proportional to the square root 
of the static atom fracture in Kelvin. So this is a common practice to get the true air speed. And we should find also another potentiometer for the static air temperature, normally according to Arink 565 standard. The output of the static air temperature is actually the square root of the static air temperature, because it was not practical to have another square function. Now there is uh, something strange here, I don't know what is uh, that thing. It is maybe a potentiometer with different taps here for linearity correction of something. I don't know. We can see a differential here. This is a beautiful construction. You can see that there is also a small transformer and a few passive parts, two diodes. The capacitor is maybe used for this motor for the reference winding. Let's see the unknown small module. Okay, there is only one connector for this one. Okay, so this is also a beautiful module. There is one small transformer here. We have a motor, this is a motor and a generator probably, I'm not sure, yes, because of the number of wires there is a generator, I can see that there is a multi-turn potentiometer, and here there is a synchro transmitter, and ok, we can see that this thing has only four wires, so this seems to be an inductive potentiometer, Okay, we can see that this thing has a stop. We can see that the rotation of this one is the same than this one. So this seems to be two outputs. And there is also a reduction gear between the potentiometer and the synchro transmitter. I think that there are three outputs. One with the potentiometer, second one with the synchro transmitter, and the third one with an inductive potentiometer, so this permits to drive any kind of instrument. So I don't know what is the use of this output module. Okay, so we can see that this is the servo control, so the, the rotation here of the motor permits to rotate these uh, three devices. And we have another inductive potentiometer, but we can see that the shaft is connected to nothing, so this is an adjustment. This permits to lock the shaft, so this is an adjustment, so this permits to compensate an offset of something, and this seems to be the control transformer for the feedback. Okay, so on the bottom side we have actually the servo control, and on the top side we have the output, so this permits to give three outputs from a synchro input, it seems, plus an adjustment here. So I don't know also the purpose of this transformer, so it should be interesting to do the reverse engineering of that thing. It is used maybe for the airspeed output, because it is close to the airspeed module, but I don't know, we will see. Let's see the last module, the airspeed module. We can see that this thing has received a shock. I think we should find the same kind of capsules. This one is sealed. Okay, so we have the same type of capsule, but the servo motor is not here. So it is not the same. So probably the servo motor is different for the altitude because of the generator. Because we should have a good generator in order to have an output voltage which is proportional to the velocity of rotation of the motor. We don't need this performance for the airspeed. Okay, look at that, another beautiful mechanical assembly. So we 
can see that there is a fine adjustment here, which this permits to correct a little bit uh, the square function, which should be performed by a cam also. So we should find a cam on that system. Yes, uh, we can see. Mm, let me see. It is difficult to see. But the cam should be here. Okay, we can see that we have also an inductive potentiometer and uh, various synchro transmitters and we have also a potentiometer, a dual potentiometer actually and we have a clutched synchro here so this permits also to have a measurement of a variation of the airspeed around a given airspeed and there is a small PCB with an IC AM1115 golden package well, this is probably a no pump but I don't know so I think we will have the same capsule assembly inside except that inside the capsule there is a pitot pressure and inside the capsule assembly there is a static pressure so the capsule is sensitive to the difference between the pitot pressure and the static pressure, that is to say the impact pressure. Okay, there is another small transformer. So this thing is full of gears, so it will be difficult, but we will see. Now let's have a look on the electronic side, which should be on the bottom side. You can see that there are two screws here and another one below this sticker. Oh, look at that. I didn't expect to find such electronics inside. Well, this thing is more complicated than expected. Okay, we can see the same part AM1115, dead code 71. And there is another one. And there is an obscure reference. 073931F. And we have uh, three transistors. This small one here is uh, 2N2945. And there is uh, a 2N3970. And the other one is a military uh, part, Jan 2N2609. Okay, so we have uh, the same IC1115. That code 73 one transistor and various uh, passive parts. Okay, I will not remove all of them because it will take a long time. I will show you the board when I will finish the reverse engineering of that device. I think it will be quite complicated because of the boards, but they are not very complicated. There is another IC here, which is also obscure. Okay, you can see that there are two identical boards. Actually, several ones. For so these are obviously the servo control amplifiers. So we have four servo control amplifiers, one for each module. Okay, so we can see the power transistors for the output. So this is the Jan TX transistor to N30 something, 36, 35. Okay, so this should be an op-amp, maybe a dual op-amp.
I can see the soldering there. Oh, this transistor. Okay, so this is uh, one servo control amplifier. Quite complex. I expected to find a magnetic servo control amplifier inside, but it is a little bit more modern than that. Okay, so there is another one here, which is different. There is a conformal coating also on these boards. So this seems to be accurate resistors or capacitors. Yes, yeah, so this uh, they are metal foil resistors actually, very accurate resistors with specific values, for example 936.3 ohms for this one. Okay, and we have here the power supply. There is a transformer and a filtering capacitor here. Okay, that's all. Okay, so it will be quite complex to do the reverse engineering. It is of course possible to connect the power supply, so this will not be complicated. We need to find the total air temperature probe. So this is a platinum sensor, 500 ohms. This will be complicated. One board is probably used for the front end sensor. After reverse engineering, which board it should be possible to find which board is used for the temperature sensor? This was the overview of this central air data computer from Bendix. Thank you for watching and see you next time for another episode. Bye bye.